Hello everyone, I am back with the second video of the video series on fractions and decimals and in today's videos we are going to learn about how do we represent fractions in pictures and division of fractions. Now let us look at representation of different fractions. So what are we going to do now is we will look at pictures and looking at the pictures we will tell what fraction is it trying to represent. Now here what do you see? You see a, a circle divided into how many equal parts? Divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 equal halves. And you see some part of the circle is shaded. So what we, are, we want to do here is how much is this shaded part of the total part? What fraction of this diagram is shaded? So the shaded part is shaded in black or gray, whatever you call it. So how much part is shaded? Out of the eight equal halves, how many halves are shaded? One half, right? So only this half is shaded. So one part out of eight parts is shaded. So we can say that one eighth of the circle is shaded. So one eighth of the circle is shaded. Let us look at this triangle. So this triangle has been divided into how many equal halves? One, two, three. So total there are three halves and how many parts out of three are shaded? One. So one third of the triangle is shaded. Let's look at yet another figure. So here this is a rectangle. So here it has been divided into four equal parts and one part out of the four parts is shaded. So one fourth of the rectangle is shaded. So in, you know this is how uh, looking at pictures you should be able to identify what fraction of that picture is shaded or not shaded. Now let's look at similar figures in a little different way. So in this case you will see that the, the, the portion which was shaded has changed. Right? So in the first case, you have a triangle and how many halves are shaded now? So here also you see that the triangle is divided into three equal parts and out of this three equal parts, two parts are shaded. So two third of the triangle is shaded. Look at this rectangle. So it has eight equal parts. How many shaded? One, two, three. So three out of four because it has four equal parts and out of four three are shaded so we say that three fourth of the rectangle is shaded look at this circle now here how many are shaded one two three four five five are shaded out of how many out of one two three four five six seven eight so five eighth of the circle is shaded so you see why am I taking so many examples is to make you understand how do we determine what part is um, how, what part of the entire thing is shaded or what part is not shaded for that matter. Now if I ask you uh, th this is the portion of the uh, circle which is shaded 5 eighth of it. If I ask you what fraction of this circle is not shaded how would you answer that? So how many parts are not shaded? One, two, three. So these are the three parts which are not shaded. So three out of eight. So three eighth of the circle is not shaded. Now here we are going to do something more interesting. So we learned how to multiply fractions, right? So here we are representing fractions multiplication using these uh, figures. So what do you see? So let's look at the first set of figure. So what do we see? We see three triangles exactly identical to each other and each triangle is divided into three equal halves. And what part of this triangle is shaded? So two third of the triangle is shaded here. Here also two third of the triangle is shaded and here also two third of the triangle is shaded. Now you have three similar triangles where two third part is shaded. So basically this means that we are trying to add these two third of a triangle plus two third of a triangle plus two third of a triangle. So what are we actually doing? We are adding 
2 by 3, 2 by 3 is added 3 times. So that basically means 2 by 3 multiplied by 3. So 3 means 3 by 1. So what would be the result? So numerator multiplied by numerator, so 6 divided by denominator multiplied by denominator that is 3. And we know that 3 into 2 is 6, so this is equal to 2. So whether it is 6 by 3 or 2. So the result is shown in this fashion. So here what do you see in this image? You see that all the three parts are shaded. So basically this is 3 by 3. What do you see here? Here also all the three parts are shaded. So this is 3 by 3. And here zero part is shaded. So it is 0 by 3. So again when you add these three, what do you get? So it is 3 by 3 plus 3 by 3 plus 0. So this is equal to 6 by 3. So this is the same thing which you got here. 6 by 3. 6 by 3. So basically this, this was 3. What does this represent together? This represents 3 into 2 by 3. And what did this represent? This represents the result. Correct? So basically when you look at this or when you look at this, they actually represent the uh, product this represents the result of the product and this represents the fractions which are getting multiplied. So this is the representation of factors multiplication. So let us look at yet another example. So here what do you see? You see two circles. In the first circle, five parts out of eight parts are shaded. One, two, three, four, five. And the same is true for the next circle as well. So when you add these two, what are we, you going to get? So adding these two basically means that 5 by 8 multiplied by 2. So what would be the result? The result would be 10 by 8. So how can we represent the result? That means 10 parts out of 8 parts. What does that mean? Now you might ask that when there are total 8 parts, then how can we have 10 shaded parts? This basically means that out of these two, because you started with two circles. So you still have two circles. So in these two circles total you have 10 shaded parts. So the first circle is totally shaded and in the second circle you just have two parts shaded. Do you want to see another interesting thing? Can you, this is right now an improper fraction. If you convert it into mixed fraction what do you get? You divide 10 by 8. So 8 ones are 8 and remainder is 2. So 10 by 8 can also be written as 1, 2 by 8. And don't you think that that is what is exactly represented by these two? 1. That means one complete circle is shaded. So this circle is completely shaded. So that is represented by 1. And 2 by 8, that means the other circle, in the other circle, only 2 part out of 8 parts is shaded. So 1, 2 by 8 is exactly what is being represented by these images. So this is how we can represent factors multiplication using uh, images. Now we will learn about another important concept which is reducing to fractions to lowest form. That means reducing fractions to lowest forms. We have learned about equivalent fractions, right? And equivalent fractions and these lowest form of fractions, they are kind of uh, connected. So look at these examples. Let's say you have 1 by 2, 4 by 8, 20 by 40, 15 by 30, 3 by 6. Now these are all examples of equivalent fractions because each one of them represent the same number. Now for certain fraction, fractions they can be reduced to a lower form but for certain fractions they cannot be further reduced. Now here in the out of these examples which I have shown only 1 by 2 is the one which is at its lowest form. Everything else can be reduced to its lowest form. So how do we reduce a fraction to its lowest form? So let's, let's have a look. So let's look at 4 by 8. So what we do with 4 by 8? Now this is possible only when there is a common factor between these numerator and the denominator except 1. So by now you understand what is a common factor, right? For example, if you talk about 4, what are the factors of 4? 1, 2, 
four so factors are basically divisors those number which exactly divides four so one two and four are the factors of four what are the factors of eight one two four eight these are the factors of eight so you see there are common factors between four and eight except one because one is a common factor between any two numbers so between you take any two numbers so one will always be a common factor so besides one if it has more common factors only then that particular fraction can be reduced to a lowest form so in this case we have two as a common factor we also have four as a common factor so we find out the hcf that is highest common factor which is the highest common factor four right so the highest common factor is four now what do we do so what we do is we divide the numerator and the denominator by four so we divide the numerator by four we also divide the denominator by four so four divided by four what is four divided by four yes it is one and what is eight divided by four that is two so four by eight is reduced to one by two now do you think that one by two can be reduced to any further lowest form let us try to check so 4 by 8 is done let us try to check if 1 by 2 can be reduced further to a lowest form now what are the factors of 1 it is 1 and what are the factors of 2 1 and 2 so basically when you look at it they have only one common factor and that is 1 so other than 1 they do not have any common factor therefore they cannot be reduced further so this is in its lowest form so 1 by 2 is in its lowest form so let us pick up some other example from here let's say 15 by 30 so let's write the common factors of 15 so it is 1 3 5 and 15 similarly let's write the common factors of 30 it would be 1 2 5 6 15 and 30 now you have learned about factors hcf lcm all these things in class 6 so in case you have forgotten please refer the videos on hcf and lcm of class 6 it is the, the chapter on playing with numbers so here which is the highest common factor so the highest common factor here is 15 so what are we going to do we are going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 15 so 15 divided by 15 is 1 and 30 divided by 15 is 2. So again this is also reduced to its lowest form. So this is how we reduce fractions to its lowest form. So normally what happens is uh, whenever you have a fraction which is an equivalent fraction of some other fraction. So it can be reduced to that lowest form of fraction. For example here 1 by 2, 4 by 8, 15 by 30. These are all equivalent fractions because they basically mean the same thing. They all actually refer to 1 by 2. But we can reduce 4 by 8 to 1 by 2. We can reduce 15 by 30 to 1 by 2. Similarly, we can reduce 3 by 6 also to 1 by 2. Try it out yourself. You can even reduce 20 by 40 to 1 by 2. So you can try these exercises yourself so that you, know, you get a hold of it. So this is how we reduce fractions to their lowest forms. So now let us look at some of the questions. Question number 1. What does this drawing represent? So here you see a lot of images. So the first image. So what, what is it? You have a, a square which is divided into four equal halves out of which one half is shaded. So this represents one by four. But you have three such squares. That means all together what does it represent? One by four multiplied by three. So this is what is being represented by this drawing. Similarly, let's look at this. First, let us focus on the first circle. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Five equal parts out of which one part is shaded. That is one by five. But you have two such circles. So this multiplied by two. So one by five into two is what is represented by this drawing. Let's look at the third one. So here again, you have a circle that two parts out of three parts are shaded so it is two by three and you have three such circles so this is two by three multiplied by three question number two 
what does this drawing represent so here it actually is telling you something which results in something else okay so let us first focus on the first triangle what does it show it has four equal parts one two three four out of which one two and three parts are shaded so this is three by four and how many such diagrams do you have you have three similar triangles that means three by four multiplied by three right now what would be the result of this three by four multiplied by three so the result would be the result actually should be nine by four but let's try to understand it from this image so it shows this is totally shaded so this is completely shaded so this is going to be four by four what about this this is also completely shaded so this is also four by four but here it is only one part is shaded so this is one by four so basically this is four by four plus four by four plus one by four so that means four by four is one four by four again is one and one by four so one plus one is actually two so 2 plus 1 by 4. So how do we add this? So here 4. Now here you have 1. So 1 into 4 is 4. Therefore 2 into 4 plus 4 into 1 is 4. So 1 into 1. Therefore 4 to the 8 plus 1 1 is 1 divided by 4. So this is 9 by 4. So this represents 9 by 4. So this actually tells that 3 times 3 by 4 is equal to 9 by 4. That is being represented by this drawing. And this 9 by 4, if you write it in uh, as mixed fraction, it is 2, 1 by 4. That means 2 triangles are completely shaded and the third triangle is shaded only 1 fourth. So we still have another image so I'm sorry I have written over it but still I think it is manageable. So here in the first figure you see there is one part which is shaded one part out of one two three four five parts. So this represents one by five. Here also one part out of five part here also one part out of five part. So basically one by five multiplied by three is equal to in this case you see one part two part and three part. So here three parts out of five parts are shaded. So this represents three multiplied by one by five is equal to three by five. Question number three, multiply and reduce to lowest form. So here we will have a good practice. Let us start with the first one. It is 20 multiplied by five by four. So how do we multiply this again numerator with numerator so 5 into 20 is 100 divided by denominator into denominator which is 1 into 4 that is 4. So this would be 100 by 4. Now you can write it in terms of this way as well 100 by 4. So you can also write it as if, if you actually divide 100 by 4 what do you get 4 to the 8. 2 then you have 0 5 is a 20 so basically 4 into 25 is equal to 100 right so this 100 by 4 can also be written as 100 can be written as 25 into 4 divided by 4 so 4 and 4 will cancel out so you are left with 25 so 20 multiplied by 5 by 4 is equal to 25 let's look at the second one that is 2 by 3 into 4 so here again you multiply the numerators together so this would be 8 divided by 3 into 1 which is 3. So is it in the lowest form? Yes it is already in the lowest form because if you compare the common factors of 8 and 3. So what are the factors of 8? 1, 2, 4, 8 and what are the factors of 3? 1 and 3. So do you have any common factor between the two except 1? No. Therefore this is already in the lowest form. Let's look at the third one. It is 5 into 6, 3 by 4. 
So first of all we will convert the mixed fraction into improper fraction. So 6 into 4 24 plus 3 that is 25 26 27. So this would be 27 by 4. Now multiply the numerators that is 5 into 27 which is 135 divided by multiply the denominators that is 1 into 4 which is 4. So 135 by 4. So this is also in its lowest form because they do not have any common factor other than 1. So this would be the answer. Question number 4 that is 2 by 7 into 7 by 9. So in this case we will do the same 2 into 7 is 14 and 9 into 7 is 63. So here let us find the common factors. 14 common factor would be 1, 2, 7, 14. And what about 63? For 63, the common factors would be 1, 3, 7, 9, 21 and 63. So which is the highest common factors? The highest common factor here is 7. So therefore, what we will do? We will divide both the numerator and the denominator by 7. So 14 divided by 7 is 2 and 63 divided by 7 is 9. So 2 by 9 is the lowest form. Let us now look at the fifth one. Now we do not have enough space. Let's do it here. So fifth one is 2 by 3 multiplied by 2 into 2 by 3. So first we will convert it into improper fractions. That is 3 into 2, 6 plus 2. That is 8. So 8 by 3. So now again multiplying the numerators, 16 multiplying the denominators. That is 9. Now 16 and 9. Do you think we can reduce it to lowest form? We can't because they again do not have any common factor other than 1. So this is already in its lowest form. So the answer would be 16 by 9. Question number 4. Which is greater 2 by 7 of 3 by 4 or 3 by 5 of 5 by 8? Now first of all let us understand what do we mean by 2 by 7 of 3 by 4. This basically means 2 by 7 multiplied by 3 by 4. So let's multiply the numerators. It is 3 to the 6. Let's multiply the denominators. It is 7 4 the 28. So this is 6 by 28. So we can reduce it to its lowest form. So how can we reduce it? So let's write the factors of 6. 1, 2, 3 and 6. Let's write the factors of 28. That is 1, 2, 7, 14, 4 and 28. So these are the factors. So which is the highest common factor? So the highest common factor here is 2. So therefore we divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. So 6 divided by 2 would be 3 and 28 divided by 2 would be 14. So 2 by 7 of 3 by 4 is going to be 3 by 14. So this is one fraction which needs to be compared. The other fact fraction that needs to be compared is 3 by 5 of 5 by 8 which is equal to 3 by 5 into 5 by 8. So this is equal to 15 by 40. So again if you look at their factors 15 is 1, 3, 5 and 15 and 40 is 1, 2, 5, 4, 10, 8, 20 and 40. So which is the highest common factor? It is 5. So therefore we will divide the numerator and the denominator by 5. So this would be 3 and 40 divided by 5 would be 8. So this value would be 3 by 8. So now basically we have to determine whether 3 by 14 is greater or 3 by 8 is greater. Now when you compare these two, you see that these are unlike fractions. That is they have different denominators. So what we need to do, we need to ensure that we convert them into such fractions such that they both have same denominators. So in order to do that, we will take the LCM of both the denominators, right? So we take LCM of 8 and 14. And what is the LCM of 8 and 14? Let's find out. So let's say 8 and 14, 2 4s are 8, 2 7s are 14, 2 2s are 4, this is 7, 
2 1 is a 2 this is 7 and then 7 1 1 so basically the lcm would be 7 into 2 into 2 into 2 which is equal to 56 7 to the 14 14 to the 28 28 to the 56 so lcm of 8 and 14 is 56 so now let us try to convert these two fractions into fractions which have same denominator. One is 3 by 14, the other is 3 by 8. So this 3 by 14, we multiply the numerator and denominator with a same whole number such that the result has a denominator 56. And the same thing we do it for 3 by 8 as well. So 14 into 4 is 56. Therefore, we multiply the numerator also by 4. So we get 12 by 56. 8 into 7 is 56. So we multiply the numerator also with 7. So we get 21 by 56. Now it is very easy to compare these two. One value is 12 by 56 and the other one is 21 by 56. Now we know that 21 is greater than 12. Therefore 21 by 56 is greater than 12 by 56. So 21 by 56 is nothing but 3 by 8. So 3 by 8 is greater than 3 by 14. Question number 5. Sally plants 4 saplings in a row in her garden. The distance between two adjacent saplings is 3 by 4 meters. Find the distance between the first and the last sapling. So the question tries to say something like this. Let's say this is one sapling, this is another sapling, this is yet another sapling and this is the fourth sapling. So Sally has planted these four saplings in one row, one after another, such that the distance between two adjacent saplings, let's say the first sapling and the second sapling, distance is 3 by 4. Again, second and third sapling, distance is 3 by 4. Third and fourth, again, the distance is 3 by 4. Now the question is, find the distance between the first and the last sapling. So this is the first sapling, this is where the last sapling is. So we have to find out this entire distance. So how would you find out this entire distance? This entire distance is nothing but 3 by 4 plus 3 by 4 plus 3 by 4 which actually means that 3 by 4 is added 3 times which can be written as 3 by 4 into 3. So we multiply the numerators which is 9, we multiply the denominators which is 4. So the distance between the first and the last sapling is 9 by 4 meters. Question number 6. A car runs 16 kilometers using 1 liter of petrol. How much distance will it cover using 2 3 by 4 liters of petrol? Now first of all, 1 liter of petrol covers 16 kilometers. So 2 3 by 4 liters of petrol will cover 2 3 by 4 into 16 kilometers. Right, it is something like this that the cost of one toffee is 5 rupees. Then what would be the cost of 6 toffees? The cost would be 6 multiplied by 5, right? So th this would be the distance traveled. Now here let's convert this mixed fraction into improper fraction 4 into 2 plus 3 that is 4 to the 8 plus 3 that is 11 by 4 into 16. Now let's multiply the numerators which would be 176 divided by denominator that is 4. So it is 176 by 4. Now can we reduce it to more simpler form? Let us look at the factors of 176 and let us also look at the factors of 4. So 176 we would see that it has 1, 2, 4, and so on as factors and when you look at 4 it has 1 2 4 now 4 doesn't have any further factor so the highest common factor would be 4 so 176 has yet many more factors but since 4 has only three factors so the highest common factor could be 4 so we can divide the numerator and denominator by 4 so 176 by 4 is what in fact, basically that is what we could have done here also. So this would be 44. So 44 into 4 is 176. So 44 kilometer is the distance that would be traveled using 2, 3 by 4 liters of petrol. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन शेड टू थर्ड ऑफ द ट्रैंगल्स इन अ बॉक्स द इन साइड दिस बॉक्स हाउ मेनी टोटल ट्रैंगल्स डू यू हैव सो टोटल ट्रैंगल्स दैट वी सी इन साइड दिस बॉक्स इज इक्वल टू नाइन नाउ वी हैव टू शेड टू थर्ड ऑफ टोटल ट्रैंगल्स दैट इज टू थर्ड ऑफ नाइन विच इज इक्वल टू टू थर्ड इन टू नाइन सो दिस वुड बी एटीन डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री सो अगेन इफ यू डिवाइड इट यू सी थ्री इंटू सिक्स इज एटीन सो दिस इज सिक्स सो देर फोर वी कैन शेड सिक्स ट्रैंगल्स इन द बॉक्स Question number eight. Vidya and Pratap went for a picnic. Their mother gave them a water bag that contained five liters of water. Okay. Vidya consumed two fifth of the water. Pratap consumed the remaining water. How much water did Vidya drink? So Vidya drank two fifth of the water. That means two fifth of how much water? Two fifth of five liters. So this means two by five into five. So this is equal to ten by five. And again, if you actually divide it, you get it as two. So therefore, Vidya drank two liters of water. What fraction of the total quantity of water did Pratap drink? Okay, now Vidya had consumed two fifth of the water, and the remaining part was consumed by. Prata. Now, one simple way to do this is the amount of water that is drank by Prata will be equal to the total amount of water that is five liters minus the amount of water which is drunk by Vidya, which is equal to three liters. So we can say that three liters of water is being consumed by Prata. So that is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is if Vidya consumed two fifth of water, that means Pratap consumed how much water? So Pratap consumed one minus two by five. So one is the complete water because now we are talking in terms of fraction. So one is the total water minus two fifth, which is drunk by Vidya. So in this case, this would be five. So one into five is five. So this is one into five minus two into one. So this is equal to three by five. So Pratap consumed three fifth of the total water. And if you follow by this procedure, in that case, you get that Pratap drank three liters of water. So when you want to find out the fraction, you would say that Pratap drank three liters out of five liters of water. So in this case also, you get the same result. That Pratap drank three fifth of the remaining water. Question number nine: Provide the number in the box such that three by five multiplied by dash is equal to twenty four by seventy five. Now, what have we learned? We learned that whenever we uh, multiply two fractions, we multiply the numerators and we multiply the denominator. So basically, what happens is numerator multiplied by numerator gives the numerator of the product. Similarly, denominator. multiplied by denominator gives the denominator of the product so that is the simple rule that we follow so in this case we have 3 by 5 multiplied by something which we don't know so let us assume that the something is say x by y which is equal to 24 by 75 so this actually means that 3 into x Is equal to twenty four. So how will you find x? So that means three multiplied by something gives four. That means that something is equal to twenty four divided by three, which is equal to eight. So x is eight. What about y? Five multiplied by y gives seventy five. So y is equal to seventy five by five, and this is equal to fifteen. Therefore, the number in the box would be eight by fifteen. So this would be the number in the box. So now that we have seen how to do multiplication of fractions, now it is turn for division. How do we divide fractions? Now the first question that comes to your mind is, why do we even need to divide fractions? Where do we come across such scenario? So let us look at an example. So what do you see on the screen? Yes, you do see a bar of chocolate. 
Now let's say that you have a complete bar of chocolate but your mom strictly told you that you can only use half of it. So the remaining half you need to keep it for somebody else. So you can only eat the half of the chocolate. So that means this entire chocolate is there but it is not available to you. Only half of the chocolate is available to you. So all you have is this half of the chocolate. Right? So what you have? So what you have is half of the chocolate. Now suddenly what happened is six of your friends came in and they said that they wanted to have the chocolate. So now you need to divide this chocolate among six of your friends. You are anyways not going to get anything. Maybe you can later try to get it from your mom. But right now you have to divide this half of the chocolate amongst six of your friends. So what you need to do, you need to divide half of this chocolate amongst six of your friends. But what would this signify? The result that you get on division signifies what, how much fraction of the chocolate each of them gets. Because when you actually divide this half of the chocolate into six equal parts, then what fraction of the chocolate did each of them get? That means what part of the total chocolate did each of your friend get? So the question is how do we divide? That is what we are planning to learn here right in this section. So let us see exactly how do we divide. Now here our challenge is how do we do this 1 by 2 divided by 6. How we will do this division. Now let us have a quick recap of what we have learned from division of whole numbers. Now do you remember so this is just a recap from whole numbers. So do you remember that whenever you divide two whole numbers for example 8 divided by 4. What does this mean? 8 divided by 4 is the same thing as 8 by 4, which is the same thing as 8 into 1 by 4. So whenever we say 8 divided by 4, it actually means 8 into 1 by 4. So a number being divided by a certain number is the same as the number being multiplied by the reciprocal of that number that is 8 divided by 4 and 8 into 1 by 4 is the same thing right so we will follow the same logic here also so when we say 1 by 2 divided by 6 so this number by which you are dividing like in this case it was 4 so this number is called divisor so if you remember your basic division rules, so when you divide 8 by 4, so you get 4 twos are 8 and this is 0. So what is this? This 4 is divisor, that is the number by which you are dividing. This number which is getting divided is called dividend. This number which you get here is the quotient and this balance that you get here is the remainder. So these are the important terms. So here in division of fractions, the divisor plays an important role. So here 6 is the divisor. So 1 by 2 divided by 6 is the same thing as 1 by 2 multiplied by the reverse of 6 that is 1 by 6. So now do you think you'll be able to solve this? Yes, it is just a multiplication. So numerator multiplied by numerator, denominator multiplied by numerator, uh, denominator. So this is 1 by 6 into 2 which is 12. So therefore we can say that 1 by 2 divided by 6 is equal to 1 by 12. So from this we can say that each of your friend received 1 twelfth of the chocolate. So this is how we deal with uh, division. So basically in division you have to remember one simple thing that you just find, I mean whatever divisor you have, just turn it upside down. That is make the numerator denominator and make the denominator numerator. So turn the divisor upside down and multiply it. So here divided by 6 is the same thing as multiplied by 1 by 6. Now what is, how is this 6 and 1 by 6 related? So that is when we talk about reciprocal of a fraction. So what do we mean by reciprocal? So reciprocal of any number is that number which when multiplied by the number gives 1. 
So let us look at some examples. So let us take the example of three. So three is a, a number. So is do you think that there is any number which when multiplied by three would give one? Yes, of course, you can think of a number like this and that is nothing but one by three. So when one by three is multiplied with three, you get three by three, which is equal to one. Now, let's consider the number as one by three. So is there any number which when multiplied with one by three gives you one? Of course, that is three. So in that case, you get one. Let's think of some other numbers. Let's say five by seven. What is that number which when multiplied by 5 by 7 gives 1? It is 7 by 5. So what do we say? We say that 3 numbers like 3, 1 by 3, they are reciprocals of each other. Similarly for 5 by 7, 5 by 7 and 7 by 5 are also reciprocals of each other. 14 by 3. What would be the reciprocal of 14 by 3? It would be 3 by 14. Right? So these are all reciprocals of numbers. So one simple way, a simple tip to find the reciprocal of a number is just swap the numerator and the denominator. And that is going to be the reciprocal of the number. Now if I ask you what would be the reciprocal of 0? Because when we say 0, 0 as such is 0 by 1. Now when you reverse it, what it becomes? It becomes 1 by 0, which is not defined. So reciprocal of 0 is actually not defined. But other than that, when you take up any number, just swap the numerators and the denominators and you get the reciprocal. Now why we discussed reciprocal is when you uh, consider division of fractions, we actually need reciprocal because we, we actually need the reciprocal of the divisors. So let us look at another example. So here in this section, we will talk about fraction divided by fraction because in the previous section, we talked about fraction divided by fraction. But here we will talk about fraction divided by fraction. Now let us say that you have a very, very long red ribbon. Now you have, you are decorating your uh, a particular thing maybe because for a competition or there is a festival so you are decorating with red ribbons and you have a very long red ribbon let's say that the length of this ribbon is 29 by 2 meters this is the length of this big ribbon but now for decoration purpose you do not need such a long ribbon instead you need small pieces of ribbons each of length half meters so you need small pieces so you need small pieces of ribbon like this such that the length of each is half meters so what do you do you cut this long ribbon into smaller parts of half meter each so like this you cut each ribbon the length is half meter so that's how you cut it now, if I ask you that total how many ribbons did you get? So total how many small pieces of ribbons did you get? So how will you be able to find this? So for that you will have to divide 29 by 2 by 1 by 2. Right? It, it is something like this. Let's say you had 10 chocolates and you have divided those 10 chocolates among five friends so how many chocolates each of them get so for that what you need to do you have to divide 10 by 5 so only then you will get how many chocolates each got so the same thing is true here the long ribbon is cut into or is divided into smaller ribbons so the length of the long ribbon is this divided by the length of the smaller ribbons so once you divide them the result that you get gives you the number of pieces that you actually get Right? Now the question is again how do we divide? Now in order to divide you remember the simple rule that we need to follow. The divisor which is the divisor here this is the divisor and this is the dividend. So these are certain things which you have already learned in your junior classes. So what you need to do is dividing 1 by 2 is same as multiplying 2 by 1. 
that is reciprocal of the divisor so in order to divide two fractions always multiply the reciprocal of divisor so reciprocal of divisor is 2 by 2 multi 2 by 1 so multiply this to the dividend so what do you get now it is simple multiplication 29 into 2 and 2 into 1 right so this is 58 by 2 so now when you divide 58 by 2 you get 29 so that means you will get 29 pieces of ribbons when you cut this big ribbons so this is how you will divide fraction by fraction let us look at yet another example of dividing a fraction by fraction so let's say that this is your birthday cake so you have a big round cake and you have been asked only to cut one fourth of the cake. That means you have rights or you have full liberty to do anything that you want to with this much portion of the cake. You are not supposed to touch the remaining part. So you, you are the owner of one fourth of the cake and you are asked to cut slices out of this one fourth portion such that each slice is one eighth of the cake so basically you have to cut slices from this one fourth part so you have to cut the slices in this way so you have to cut it in such a way that each slice is one fourth of the total cake right now anyways this part of the cake is one fourth right now we want it to be cut into slices in such a way that each slice is one eighth of the total cake. So how do we get? So if I tell you that okay you have cut it in that way so how many slices will you get? So in how into how many slices should you cut this part? So in order to get that it means that one eighth such that each slice is one eighth multiply it by the number of slices into which you need to cut so let us assume that you cut this part of the cake into x number of slices you do not know what is that x so in that case 1 8 into x should be equal to 1 by 4 let us say you have cut it into 3 slices that means 3 multiplied by 1 by 8 because each part should be 1 8 of the cake so 3 multiplied by 1 by 8 should be equal to 1 4 because this total part is 1 4. So in this fashion what would be x? x would be equal to 1 by 4 divided by 1 by 8. So how do we divide? 1 by 4 multiplied by 8 by 1. So this is 8 by 4 and what is 8 by 4? It is 2. That means this portion should be cut into 2 slices. So this can be visualized like this. This is your entire cake, right? You are only allowed to cut this much part. So when you cut this part into two slices, then each slice becomes one eighth of the entire cake. So each slice becomes such that it is one part of eight equal parts of the cake, right? So you, you have to cut this one fourth of the cake only into two equal slices. So you see these are certain examples where we see that we actually encounter situations where we have to divide a fraction by a fraction. So now let us have a quick recap of whatever we have learned in division of fractions. So the first scenario is so the common rule while dividing fractions is that we have to multiply the reciprocal of the divisor to the dividend. Now it might sound very complicated but you saw it for yourself that it's pretty much simple. So what are the different scenarios that we can encounter? The first scenario could be fraction divided by a whole number. For example 3 by 5 is a fraction divided by a whole number like 6. So which is the divisor here? So 6 is the divisor. So this actually means 3 by 5 multiply by the reciprocal of divisor. How do you get the reciprocal of divisor? Just interchange the numerator and denominator. So this becomes 1 by 6. Now you multiply normally. So 3 into 1 is 3. 5 into 6 is 30. So when you look at it, 3 by 30 is a fraction which can be further reduced to its simple form and the simple form is 1 by 10. Now you just try it yourself, how do we reduce to the simple form because we have already learned it. 
The second scenario that you can encounter is whole number divided by a fraction. For example, a number like 9 divided by a fraction like 1 by 3. So in this case, which is the divisor? So the divisor in this case is this 1 by 3. So what we do, we multiply it with reciprocal of 1 by 3, which is 3. So the answer would be 27. The third situation that you can encounter is fraction divided by fraction. Something like 1 by 6 divided by 1 by 15. So here the divisor is 1 by 15. So we can write it as 1 by 6 multiplied by 15 by 1. So this is equal to 15 by 6 which can again be further reduced to its simplest form which would be 5 by 2. So this is how we perform the division operations. The only thing you need to remember is wherever you see a divisor, find its reciprocal and multiply it. So in that case, your division no more remains division and becomes multiplication. So based on whatever we have learned about division on fractions, let us quick division of fractions. Let us quickly look at some of the questions. Question number one, find five divided by three, four by seven. So first of all, we will convert this mixed fraction into improper fraction. So 7 into 3 plus 4, that is 21. 7 into 3 is 21 plus 4, that is 25. So this is 25 by 7. So which is the divisor? 25 by 7 is divisor. So we multiply it with reciprocal of divisor, that is 7 by 25. 5 into 7 is 35. 1 into 25 is 25. So this is 35 by 25. Let us reduce it to its lowest form. So for reduction, we will first have to see the common factors. So the factors of 25 are 1, 5, 25. Factors of 35 are 1, 5, 7 and 35. So which is the highest common factor? It is 5. So let us divide the numerator and the denominator by 5. So 35 divided by 5 by 25 divided by 5. So this is 7 and this is 5. So the answer would be 7 by 5. Question number 2. Find the reciprocal of each of the following fractions. Classify the reciprocals as proper fraction, improper fraction and whole numbers. So what would be re finding reciprocal is very simple. Just swap the numerator and the denominator. So reciprocal of 3 by 7 would be 7 by 3. Reciprocal of 12 by 7 would be 7 by 12. Reciprocal of 1 by 11 would be 11 by 1. That is 11. Now which is a proper fraction? Wherever the numerator is lesser than the denominator. Out of these three, where do you see the numerator is lesser than denominator? Here. So this is a proper fraction. Which is an improper fraction? Definitely this one. Because the uh, numerator is 7 which is greater than the denominator that is 3. And this is a whole number because 11 is a whole number. It is a number that falls between 0 and infinity. The whole numbers start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. So 11 is a whole number. Question number 3. Find 4 1 by 3 divided by 3. So here also first of all we will convert this into improper fraction 4 into 3 plus 1. So 4 into 3 is 12 plus 1 is 13 divided by 3 divided by 3. So here the divisor is 3. So we can write it as 13 by 3 multiplied by 1 by 3. So now let's multiply the numerators. It is 13. Let's multiply the denominators. That's 3 into 3 which is 9. So the result is 13 by 9. Question number 4. Find 3 1 by 5 divided by 1 2 by 3. So again let us try to convert them into improper fractions. So here 5 into 3 15 plus 1 that is 16 by 5 divided by 3 into 1 that is 3 plus 2 that is 5 divided by 3. So here which is the divisor? So 5 by 3 is the divisor so we can say 16 by 5 multiplied by 3 by 5. Now let's multiply it normally that is 16 into 3 is 48 and 5 into 5 is 25. So 48 by 25. In case you want to convert it into mixed fraction, you can even do that. Multiply, I mean divide 48 by 25. So you get 25, once a 25. So the remainder is 23. Therefore 48 by 25 can be written as 123 by 25. So with this, I think 
you have understood how do we perform division on fractions now see multiplication or division on fractions are not complicated things these are very basic simple things it is just that you need to do them step by step and try to practice more and more questions so that you know you get a hold of it i hope you enjoyed the video our next video is going to be on decimals so be with us